Welcome to Engineering Everyday Equity. I'm Anthony D. Mays, software engineer on the data visualization team here at Google. In this series, we're going to talk about practical ways in which we can build equity, diversity, and inclusion, or EDI, into the product development process. And for this episode, the third of our three-part series, we're going to specifically focus on the validation and prototyping phase. So now I'd like to welcome Rafael Vasquez uh, as we talk about the validation phase of the design sprint process. Welcome, Raf. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's good to be here. You know, I'm a program manager here at Google, and I've seen firsthand what can happen when you don't take into account getting a diverse set of users to use your product early on. What ends up happening is that you end up getting tech debt. And what you and I might think about tech debt is, you know, pieces of code or things that don't work as they should, right. or bugs, and we're just going to fix it later type right. stuff, right? right? But tech debt is more than just that. Tech debt can mean things like having your app not be really usable for certain communities because of what they're, what they're in. So as an example, I am a program manager that's part of the people in sharing team, and we worked on the photos direct sharing uh, feature. But I'm also, I was also born in El Salvador, and I came here, and a lot of my family is still there. And when we launched this, I was really excited to show them, hey, this is something I worked on. This is so cool. And what ended up happening was that it didn't work that well for them. And what I noticed was that you know, they don't have the newest phones. They don't have the best you know, data coverage, data plans. And those things really hampered how the usage of that feature worked. And if we had started to address those things early on as part of our testing and as part of our, we could have, we could have fixed the app. Yeah, I, I can really appreciate that because as an engineer, after putting all of the hours and time into building this application and building what I believe is a great product, you end up in a situation where you can't get it out to people as quickly as you may have wanted. And so you've got a delay timeline, you've got things you've got to fix. and those changes are probably more expensive on the tail end than they would have been had we addressed them sooner in the process, right? Yeah, so actually I was on a team that had one of our releases be put in jeopardy because we did not address screen readers early enough. And so we had to do a last minute scramble to try to get it out on time. And if we had just taken the time to do that during the prototype and validation phase and we had made sure that we had had a, a, someone who would use the screen reader as part of that group, we wouldn't have been in that situation. Wow, yeah, so I can imagine that's really frustrating. And I also have to imagine that those things are much more expensive to fix later in the process rather than sooner. They are. And that's why you want to take that time up front to recruit a diverse set of users when you're prototyping and making sure that those users actually use all the different use cases in your app in the, in the ways that they would normally do it. So what's this app that you're building? So this app is called Scholar, and it's about connecting matriculating high school students with colleges and scholarship opportunities. And it's really designed to remove the frustration out of the process of pursuing a college education. So you can take that app and you can, when you, when you prototype that app, you can take the easy route and just see, can, can students find the scholarships, right? Okay, right. But you want to start looking at other things too. You want to start looking at making sure that students of different ethnicities or different abilities can find scholarships that are geared towards them. Because there are some scholarships out there that are geared towards specific types of students. And then if you're going to take this app internationally, you want to start looking at other things too, like let's say uh, language and dialect. Like there's countries out there where there are multiple dialects. Can people of multiple dialects use your app and find the information easily? So all those things are, you can take into account when you prototype by making sure that you have a vi wide variety of users that go through your app. Okay, and I care about all of those different kinds of users. All right, Raf, so how do I find these users from diverse backgrounds and when should I start looking for them? Well, you should really start looking for them even before you start your design sprint because you don't want to end up in a situation where you've built a prototype and you need people to use it and you're scrambling to find people. That's, that's one of the key things. Because then it starts to feel like more of an afterthought. Exactly. Okay, all right, so do I you know, use social media to find these users or? Uh, yeah, I mean, social media is a good way. You can okay. figure out which social media platforms are popular with the users that you want to target and you know, post ads there. That, that's a good way of doing it. Another way is you could reach out to nonprofits that are you know, working with the groups that you're trying to get feedback from and, and ask for help there. 
that makes sense, all right? And maybe I can go tap some friends and family on the shoulder, I don't know. Well, you should really start looking for them even before you start your design sprint because you don't want to end up in a situation where you've built a prototype and you need people to use it and you're scrambling to find people. Figure out which social media platforms are popular with the users that you want to target and you know post ads there. That, that's a good way of doing it. Another way is you could reach out to nonprofits that are you know working with the groups that you're trying to get feedback from and, and ask for help there. You also have to remember that you want to try to get your product out as close to the user as possible. So you want to think about remote testing. Like how do you Remote get... testing? Where's, what, what's that all about? You could bring your user in and you could have the user use the product in your office, per se. Sure. And you'll have a certain experience. Mm -hmm. But that experience can be totally different when the user goes and uses that product in their home, mm. in their daily life. Like, like their, their whole usage could be completely different. So you want to get as close to the user as possible and get their feedback when they're using it. You know, that's interesting because it reminds me of something that uh, Brian Stevenson, a social justice attorney and uh, advocate, once mentioned. He talked about being proximate to communities uh, from, you know, that have these uh, folks from diverse backgrounds. And I remember him talking about the need to really get close to those communities and, and meeting their needs where they are. And I felt like remote testing is, can be part of that process of being proximate with those communities. Exactly. And being proximate with those communities is going to just open it up to just seeing how your app works and it'll, it'll save you a lot of time in the future. All right. So remote testing. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I, can't wait to get Scholar in front of my users and really meeting them where they are. Raf, I really appreciate having you here. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Engineering Everyday Equity. If you'd like to learn more, or if you'd like to further the work of equity, diversity, and inclusion in your company or product, please visit the link in the description below. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you do not intentionally include you will unintentionally exclude. Thanks.